Hey friends, it has been a long time. <laughs> I feel like it's been a long time since I really got to like be in the kitchen and enjoy cooking and to share with you everything that we're making. I know I took a last week off from posting a kitchen video mainly because we were pretty much out of the area, um, away at doctor's appointments for most of the week and we were getting home at like eight, nine o'clock at night. Um, so it just wasn't conducive to filming or really to doing any of this. We gave ourselves grace and we did eat out last week a few times at small local businesses where we were at any given night. So we're back and it's time to cook. So tonight we are having Philadelphia or Pennsylvania style kind of like cheesesteak sandwiches on on rolls and I thought I would make some fresh french fries to go with it uh, so that's what I'm doing I have some defrosted out of the freezer beef and we're gonna get cooking <laughs> So today is Monday, day after time change, and I hate the time change <laughs> with a passion. I feel like I am messed up for weeks when we go through time change, whether it be spring ahead or fall back, doesn't matter. They both mess me up, but I am excited for it to be light out longer. I really cannot wait for longer days. I hate when it gets dark early. I hate the cold. I hate the winter. I hate it all. I am ready for spring. I'm ready for summer. I'm ready for sunshine and warmth. I'm ready to be outside. And I am over it getting dark so early. So we are just cutting up some onion. We're going to sweat these, saute them down. Right in the same pan that we are going to cook our beef in. So it's all going to become one yummy skillet of beef and onion goodness. We are forecasted tonight to get between zero and a hundred inches. <laughs> I've seen so many conflicting news reports for the weather. Some are saying adjusting. Some are saying it's going to be the storm of the century. <laughs> it's an exag exaggeration. Not a hundred. Well, I certainly hope not, but you, you never know. You want eight feet of snow. Honestly, if it's going to snow, I wish it would just do it or be done. Like, you know, the biggest snowstorm. ready for a big storm or spring. Because it's not supposed to be warm here and cold in California. <laughs> it's supposed to be the opposite. Supposed to be cold here and warm in California? Mm Well, and then we have like Zachary, who was in Arizona, and he got a taste of the sunshine and warmth and then had to come back here to the, the cold. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. so we have our onions sliced up. We're going to throw these in the skillet and then we're going to start cutting up our potatoes. As usual, it is a busy active kitchen, so bear with me. We have our onions sweating down now for a good 10 or so minutes while I was cutting up the potatoes, and I still want to cook them down more. I put one potato piece in here to see if we were ready to fry. Looks pretty good. So 
So I would say that we are in fact ready. And when I fry French fries, I just take the colander and I line it with a few paper towels to catch any excess grease. What you may not have caught was my French fries. I cut them, I soak them in water, and then I put a paper towel over to get any excess liquid off before putting them in because you don't want it to be too wet. <laughs> Clearly we are still too wet. Don't put food in hot oil with your hands. <laughs> Don't do as I do. <laughs> All right, so our onions are looking like they are ready for the beef to be put in. So for a second, I'm just gonna move the onions to the side slightly, and I am gonna get our beef in here. I partially defrosted this. It's still a little on the more frozen side, but that's okay. It will quickly, it will quickly cook down. Somewhere along the way, I forgot to speak today. But we are going to get this nice and seasoned up. So we are going to put on here some of my seasonal. Some original dry rub seasoning, this is called. Some caramelized onion butter seasoning from Kinder's. The only time I ever buy Kinder seasoning is from Sam's Club. I always find the best price on it there. If you buy it at the regular store, you pay an arm and a leg. So I'm just going to let this slowly I'm gonna let this slowly cook down. I only have it on about medium heat. Together a little bit more. This first batch of french fries is just about ready to, to come out. Now I'm going to do a double fry on my french fries since they are fresh potatoes. I'm going to do one slight fry like this, take them out, do another batch, and then before serving, they're going to go in for one more quick dip, and then I will season them up. I find that it gives you a much crispier French fry that way. So our beef is cooking down nicely. Didn't take very long at all. I want to say maybe... 15 minutes. Um, I did put in here some Worcestershire and I am going to add in a quarter pint of our caramelized onion jam just to layer that flavor. This is one of my favorite canned items. It's a great mix in. It's a great topper. I love this. I will never be without this on my shelf now.
and that goes. Going to add some ground black pepper and I'm just going to let this cook some more. I'm going to get some sauce, sorry, some sauce started for those that want sauce. And a lot of the family has like a California style typically, which is lettuce, tomato, onions, and mayo. So we only need a little bit of sauce. For our sauce, we are using our roasted tomato sauce. And I am thickening this up just a tad bit with a little bit of tomato paste mixed in. There's our french fries after their second fry, nice and crispy and seasoned, ready to be eaten. Well, here you have it. We have our steak looks delicious i did toss in there just a little bit of italian seasoning i decided i needed some extra fried onion to put on so after i fried the french fries i threw a whole sliced super thin onion in there we have some freshly toasted buns cheeses of choice hot cherry pepper poppers to go fresh cut double fried french fries extra crispy sweet pepper strips we have our hot pepper spread of course some red sauce pickles vinegars mayos whatever you like to go on your steak it's time to eat so i'll see you tomorrow guys Today, I started the day knowing it was going to be a long day. So you saw everything that I threw in here. Um, what you did not see is that I put in, when I got back hours later, I put in a little bit of dehydrated onion, or as I call them, the magic onions, and about a half of a red onion that I had on the counter, just tossed it in there. And I've been letting this just cook down in its juices. It's just shredding right now. And I'm going to cook up some white rice to have with this, as well as um, a bag of frozen Brussels sprouts and carrots. And we will have dinner on the table. I knew it was going to be a long day. Um, I've been up and on the road since 
about five o'clock this morning. So this was my gift to myself of doing a quick, no fuss, crock pot meal. That's still gonna be really yummy. This smells so good. So gotta get the rice and the veggies done and we have dinner. This is as simple as I can get my rice. We have four cups of water in there, about two tablespoons of butter, a little chicken bouillon. We are going to do two cups of white rice. Seasoning, seasoning with a little bit of adobo, a little bit of minced onion, minced garlic, and a little parsley for some color. All I'm going to do is give this a quick stir turn our heat down to low and a heavy lid right in our dutch oven and i'm just going to let this cook probably about 15 minutes 20 minutes before i check on this um but that'll be all it's been a little over 15 minutes Ooh, that's hot so let's see how our rice is looking. Probably shouldn't try and do that without a... Ooh, looks good. Perfect. Simple, fluffy. I'm gonna turn the heat off completely and let it sit for a few minutes yet while the veggies finish up and we have dinner done. Sometimes it really is so nice when a plan comes together. We have our peachy Dijon pork, our fluffy white rice, and we have shaky camera. We have our Brussels sprouts and carrots out of the air fryer. It's time for dinner. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Hey, friends. It is Wednesday, and tonight I am making my chicken noodle soup. It's not a traditional recipe because I do put ground sausage in mine. I find that it gives a much richer flavor for the broth. Um, but beyond that, it is a pretty traditional soup. It has celery, carrots, onions. Um, I guess, okay, let's scratch traditional. It's not traditional. I put sofrito in my soup. I put the ground Italian sausage. Um, I always like the Jimmy Dean one, and this was at a Denton Bent store that I mentioned. So this was a $1.29 score. This was out of the freezer, so Frito was out of the freezer, and then we have some split chicken breast. So I sear the chicken breast first, I put water in, I let it boil down until it's falling off of the bone, pull the bones out, and set all of that to the side. I then brown up the sausage and all of the vegetables and bring it all together and let it bubble. Now my intention was to start this much earlier, as usual, um, but it's 5.45 now, so no time like the present. Uh, the girls are either doing homework or taking a quick nap and um, we're going to get this done. So let's do it. <laughs> I do a, a blend of like onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of adobo and Italian seasoning. Now I'm specifically making this today because Angelina requested this and I broke out my big um, 18 quart stock pot to do this. Uh, this is something that I like to do in a big batch. I am not going to can this this time. I do have a few jars canned left on the shelf downstairs, but I wanted to make some fresh today. When I make my noodles, I will keep them on the side. Um, that way, if we don't consume all of it, which 
there's no way we're going to consume all of this. I then can freeze some for a future meal without the noodles in it. And it's a way of preserving freezer meal prep and making dinner for tonight all in one. That's the kind of preserving I like to do. So here we go. Okay, so we have our big old Big Mama stock pot. I'm using a little bit of our garlic infused oil to give it a nice depth of flavor. I like building those layers of flavor. And then I'm gonna bring the chicken over here to show you as well. It's just um, split chicken breast. That garlic oil smells so good always. See, split chicken breast. I am just going to do a little bit of salt on here. And some fresh cracked black pepper. Just like that. We're going to sear I have used all different cuts of chicken for this I even done like whole chicken um, the split chicken breast is the least amount of work to take the meat off the bone and it's just quick and easy so we have three of those in there. I'm going to let this sear and then we're going to put some hot water in there and let it bubble. So I know a lot of the dishes that I share with you, I really like to make sure everything's diced, you know, just perfectly. But my chicken soup is not one of those things. I like it to be pretty rustic. I like it to be a nice hearty chunky bite. Um, so I just do kind of like a rough chop for most of the vegetables. This is always my kids kind of go to when they're not feeling well, or if they just want, you know, a hug in a bowl. My chicken soup is always the most requested item. And that has always been why I really like having jars of this on the shelf. If I'm feeling under the weather and the kids want this, I can just dump it right out of the jar and go. But on days where I have the ability to make a fresh, I will always make a fresh. To the chickens, that'll go. We got these carrots at a farmer's market and they've been in the fridge they've stored really well but i can't get over how big these carrots are They're, it's insane i do peel the carrots for this and the peels right to the chickens so does everyone have spring fever like i do i cannot wait to get outside and have the warm sunshine the winter weather just has come back with a force this week we had a few snow showers nothing to like write home about it was nothing that really accumulated in our area but some areas got pretty hammered and we definitely have had the wind has been crazy here So I'm just going to get the rest of these chopped up and I'll bring you back. All right, we have quite a browning on the bottom of this pot. So I am going to do a quick deglaze. I would say 
I got a movie in here. <laughs> Get in my drawer. I would normally say, put the day Try that again. I need a better tripod, guys. There we go. I would normally say to use a white wine, but I have some red wine on hand, so we're going to use some red wine. Whew, free facial. Okay, so got all of that good flavor buildup off the bottom. I'm going to put some water in here and then let this boil. All right, guys, I have just enough water in here to cover the chicken, essentially, because I'm not going to be cooking this long enough to develop a true rich broth. I am going to throw in here some of my canned chicken broth, but we need enough water in here to boil the chicken off off the bone. So that's what we have. I'll bring you back. All right, guys, I'm throwing in the towel. I've decided I'm no longer calling it chicken noodle soup. I'm going to call it farm soup <laughs> because I made the shredded pork last night and I am going to put the remaining bit of shredded pork that we have left in since I ended up having less chicken than I was thinking. And we're doing the ground sausage, the regular chicken, the pulled pork that I have from last night. So we're going to call it farm noodle soup. So I'm just about to take the chicken out um, and get that shredded, and then we're going to start building all the rest of the flavors. Okay, so just took the chicken and the broth out. I need to put a little bit more oil in here and then get our vegetables in. We didn't rinse the pot, obviously, because we are using it for the same thing. Gonna put our onions in. Once these sweat down some, we are then going to put our sausage in and brown that up. And that'll chop up the onions a little bit more when we do that. I am cheating a bit. I have two bags of frozen chopped onions that I'm putting in here. which are now defrosted. quick bit of salt there. All right, we've sweated our onions down. I'm going to put in here some nice heaping spoons of minced garlic. And our Jimmy Bean all natural sausage. Then we're going to choppy choppy. Feel like you're fogging up here. Oh, I think that works. There we go, not as foggy. I 
I know a lot of people that make chicken noodle soup or any kind of soup and they just throw their veggies in. And you can absolutely do that, but I feel like sauteing the vegetables like this gives it such more depth and layers of a flavor. And that's how I've always made mine. So I probably will always make it that way. <laughs> We don't use a ton of sausage in here because you don't want that to be the star of the show. You just want it to be a nice background singer. And for years, my Angelina, who, as I've shared with you all, does not like sausage, never knew that I put sausage in my chicken noodle soup. And <laughs> she wasn't so thrilled when she found out, but she likes it. So this is one way that I get her to eat a little bit of sausage. There we go. That's a little bit better. We have our carrots, our celery, our onions, our garlic, our sofrito, our tomato paste, all of our seasonings in there working together. I wish we could, you know, have a smelling option through, <laughs> through the internet that I could share this all with you. Okay, so now back in here, I am going to put the, oh, that's very hot. I'm going to put back in here the Broth from boiling our chicken. And we're gonna let this boil for a little bit to soften our carrots and our celery. And I can tell from the amount of broth that is here looking at this, I definitely need to add some of my canned broth, or if you don't have canned broth, I mean, store-bought broth, and if you don't have that, some chicken bouillon and some more water. So, but I'm going to run down to the pantry and get some, some broth. Decided I'd bring you with me. So we have our broth, and since I said I was turning into a farm broth, a uh, farm soup, I'm going to use some turkey broth. No one will ever know the difference. I know I talk all the time about how much I love this little chopper, but let me tell you, I hate shredding chicken. And I was just doing this and I thought I would show you. I just took the big pieces off of the breast and into my little mixy bowl here. And there we go. You can do as little or as much as you want, but. I love this thing. This is literally one of my favorite kitchen items. All right, as you see, we are bubbling away here. I added in three quarts of broth. And I am going to now mix in all of the meat. This is a little bit of pork that we had left from last night and the chicken from today. I did make this relatively quickly. I think I started at like 5.45 and I've been doing other things in between, of course. And it's now quarter after seven. So that's pretty quick. And I don't want to dry out the meat. I just want this to come together, so I'm going to turn it down to medium. And I am starting to cook our, well, I'm starting to heat the water to boil for the pasta. And then I'm going to take some of the soup out of here and put it in with the pasta based on how much I think we'll be having tonight. And then the rest of this, I'll let cool down and I will be freezing. Okay. 
try our pasta has cooked and I have it mainly mostly drained um, but I kept just a little bit of the starchy water in there because like anything that starch is gonna bring the soup together now I did turn off the the burner um, but we do still have residual heat so that's why you see it doing that right away I always like to give you size reference because I make things on such a large scale, but this is a seven quart Dutch oven that I am putting tonight soup in. And this is an 18 quart stock pot. I don't want to overdo it because I don't like soggy noodles, but let me bring you in a little bit closer here to really show you how good. There's a good zoom. This is so hearty, rich, full of good, healing yumminess. And the broth is rich, even though we didn't have time to really develop the broth all day long like you'd like to with our canned broth along with searing the meat and deglazing the pot and adding all of those layers of flavor, the sofrito and the tomato paste. This is gonna be so delicious. So I'm gonna let this simmer for probably just about five minutes yet and get everyone served. And for time reference, it's 7.30 right now. So not so bad. I'll see you next time guys. Hi guys, it's Friday. That means it's the end of the work week. Yay, because it's been a long week. <laughs> Yesterday, one of And we have barking. So, um, yes. Yesterday, uh, one of Yesterday, one of our dogs had to have an emergency surgery yesterday morning, so I did not film yesterday. We just did leftovers. She's doing well. Um, so that's good. She had a big hematoma on her ear that needed uh, repair. And like I said, she's doing well. So she's resting. Um, dogs are not used to being crated all the time, but anytime there's anything like this going on, we keep them separated. So you might hear them complaining. <laughs> um, but I have to get dinner on the table quickly. Uh, girls are headed out the door shortly for a weekend away. And I want to make sure that they're fed before they leave. So I have some leftover steak meat um, from making the steak sandwiches. So I'm going to take this and turn it into a creamy cheesesteak, cheeseburger, pasta dish. Um, and it is quarter of seven. It's actually more like 10 of seven. So let's see how quickly I can get this done. So I may end up having to voice this over because as soon as I hit record, everyone's home, everyone's noisy, everything's going on. Um, I am going to be making the pasta right inside of our purple carrot beef broth. I hope you can all see that. It is a little purpley from the purple carrots. <laughs> so, but I'm just going to boil this. Um, with a little bit of salt added into it to make sure we really wake up that uh, flavor. And then that's what the pasta is going to be cooked in. We are using shell pasta tonight for this. And then I already have the beef put in our little skillet here to warm up. I'm going to use a whole half a pint of the caramelized onion jam for this. There we go. Nice pop off into the skillet we go. Now my goal with this tonight is to make a large enough portion that we have for dinner and then I can send some 
with the girls for where they're going to share with everyone there. Cream cheese is going to be used to make this nice and creamy, of course. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of sour cream and some heavy cream to make it a really rich sauce, along with a little bit of cheddar cheese. The best way to get a creamy, not lumpy sauce when you're using cream cheese is to make sure that you fully melt it and incorporate it with everything before adding any more liquids or cream or milk or anything else besides. So I'm going to work on that and I'll bring you back. Now, as you may be able to see, this is going to be a very shallow boil of this pasta. This is essentially going to soak up all of the liquid from the beef broth and then they will finish off cooking in the sauce. So this will need to be stirred as I'm cooking it. And I don't have a recipe for this, let's be very clear. This is, I'm winging it. So we have our, our cream cheese just about combined here. I'm gonna make sure that we don't have any lumps. I am putting in some of the hot pepper spread to bring this alive and make it very cheesesteak-like. We all like a little zing, so that'll be just perfect. Of course, we're going to need some Worcestershire sauce. I feel like Worcestershire needs to be in just about any dish <laughs> that has beef, so this will be no exception. In our beef, we're going to put just about, I'd say, probably about two tablespoons of sour cream. And I would say this is about, about a cup of cheddar cheese, maybe a cup and a quarter. I'm going to turn my heat down to medium. And keep combining. I'm also going to put in here red sauce. Now this is the red sauce that I used for the steak sandwiches. Now this is where you could completely go like a different way and turn this into more of like a cheeseburger pasta by putting in like relish and mustard and ketchup and really making it cheeseburger-like. Think of like a Big Mac sauce, like a Thousand Island kind of idea but I am opting to keep this more of like cheesesteak kind of way. If I had more time to get this on the table, I probably would saute up some more onions to go in here, but the caramelized onion jam is, is standing in for that. Going to put in our heavy whipping cream. I'm 
until we get it to the consistency we want. Gotta stir our noodles here. I wanna make sure that when these are cooked, that there's barely any, well, that there's really no liquid left, but I am just about dry. So I may have to add some hot water to this. All right, our pasta is finally to the consistency that I was looking for. I could have made that a lot easier on myself if I would have just boiled it like normal. So note to self. But we're going to slowly combine this with our cheese sauce mixture. And I want all of that good starchiness. Make sure that that's turned off as well so we don't have any stickage. And I am getting this done just in the nick of time because the girls need to leave in literally about 15 minutes, not even. And I'm going to top this off with a little bit of Gouda, and we're going to bring you over to the island for that. It's hot. All right, so here is our pasta. And on this, I am putting some shredded thousand day aged Gouda from Aldi that's been living in the fridge. And I may actually do a little bit more on top of here. This is a really, this is actually like a hard cheese and it turned my thumb orange as soon as I touched the, the wax part. But Gouda makes everything Gouda. <laughs> Zachary's looking at me, he doesn't think my jokes are funny. All right, guys. Well, there it is. There's dinner. Going to get everyone fed quick and out the door they go for the weekend. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. You're all going to get a close up of the pasta because Zachary is not feeling camera ready after work, but he agreed to do a quick taste test for me. It's hot. Hey guys, it's a Saturday night and it's just me and Zachary. <laughs> so we thought we would do a date night at home and jump on the tinned fish bandwagon of date nights. And I think we may have went a little overboard, um, but we're going to have some black pepper honeyed salmon. So I made a little smoked salmon. So I made a little smoked salmon plate here and we have our gorgeous little cutting board from our close friends with all of our bread and cracker options we have everything parm pumpernickel this is a black cracked pepper garlic pita garlic toasts rye and three cheese semolina and of course we have some horseradish some wood grilled olives, some kimchi to try, a lemon artichoke pesto, and then we have our cheeses, a grass-fed Irish oak smoked cheddar, a garlic and herb bella vitano, I'm probably saying that incorrectly, and a Montemore cheddar. Then we also have some soft cheeses. We have the port wine, a garlic herb, and I think a cheddar, and some goat cheese to try, garlic and herb. And I made a baked brie. And then on top of this, we have our um, garlic 
confit. It wasn't coming to my brain. Garlic confit with a little bit of garlic honey and garlic oil. So that's a garlic bomb. And then for our tin fish, we have wild caught sardines and extra virgin olive oil. Now, the whole reason we wanted this whole dinner date night thing was to try some bougie tin fish. <laughs> but where we live, there's no bougie stores. So we're doing our best. We have chicken of the sea, sardines, and mustard sauce, wild mackerel and olive oil, smoked rainbow trout and olive oil, smoked mussels and olive oil, and jumbo calamar and salsa picante. So we're going to give these a try and maybe we'll bring you along for a bite or two. Hey guys, so I know it is Sunday. In the last clip you saw, we were talking about showing you our tin fish dinner, um, but we honestly just opted to just spend some time together. Just us, no camera, no kids. So sorry we didn't give you all the behind the scenes, but I will tell you that the smoked mussels were really good. Zachary said that the calamar tasted sweet like crab meat. And my favorite thing is always smoked salmon. Can't go wrong with that had that for lunch today. I'll, I'll be sure to drop a, a picture in this somehow so you can see that. Um, but we just enjoyed some, some time. So I, I hope you can all understand. Um, but today's Sunday and I have dinner going right now. Had a little bit of a bubble over, <laughs> but we've been downstairs all day, Zachary and me, um, starting seeds for this year's garden. So I didn't I can record in two places at one time. Um, so I do have that all documented to share with you all. Um, but here, it wasn't really anything super exciting prep-wise or anything. We have some of our leftover farm chicken soup um, that I had in the fridge, really brothy. I put it in our, our pot here and I put in with it just dried noodles. I used some of the there's my timer. Some of the uh, tricolor rotini and then some of the um, radiator shaped pasta. And then on top of that, I put, well, I added another quart of turkey broth into it. And then on top of it, I put store bought biscuits. And I just put it on medium heat and put the lid on. And it has been bubbling now for about 30 five minutes i want to say and it's just about ready so it's going to be a hearty turkey broth chicken noodle pork it's our our hearty farm soup chicken yum <laughs> my, my brain is fried at this point guys <laughs> it's a busy weekend so we have our farm noodle soup there we go farm noodle soup topped with some biscuits so i'm going to bring you in real close here to show you what the the biscuits look like because it's not like you're thinking of like a dry cooked biscuit it's more almost like a dumpling that it turns into by doing it this way and it's important when you do it this in this manner that you give it at least 30 minutes to cook so it's not raw it's not going to be a crusty um it's going to be soft but it's going to be cooked through so bring in show you and then I got to get everyone served because everyone's hungry all right well Zachary is over my shoulder because apparently he's hungry and he loves biscuits so I brought you in close here so you can see 
Zachary, check it out. Ooh, I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> So, like I said, it's almost like a dumpling texture that the biscuits become, but they are cooked, and um, it's time to get everyone served. See, they kind of cook together. I'll show you the flip side here. See, it's all nice and bubbly and kind of cloud-like. Uh, this is going to be a good party. It's an extra cold day today here. Old man winter is just not giving it up for spring and he has stuck around. So we've been in our cold, <laughs> cold basement all day, which is great for food storage, but terrible for me. And I'm ready to have this to warm my bones. So as always, I thank you all for joining us and for spending time with me in the kitchen and taking time out of your day um, to to join us and i appreciate that you all understand that this season of our life right now we are busy starting and doing things for the garden so the food isn't as detailed right now but there's lots of love in this pot i'll see you next time guys have a wonderful week